Phrased differently, one may ask why is it that Rashi, in his commentary to Vayikra 14.2, links the Pasuk to the overall Tahara procedure, that no part of the Tahara procedure can be done at night. Milamid, she'em metaharin oto balayla. Whereas in his commentary in the Gemara Megillah, he seems to apply the Pasuk to the procedure involving the birds, the cedar wood, the crimson wool, and the hyssop grass. The answer lies in the distinction between the two texts for which Rashi is offering a commentary. In his commentary to the Chumash text, Rashi is bound by the restrictions of the Peshutta Shel Mikra. From the standpoint of the Peshutta Shel Mikra, as noted earlier, there are two options for defining the word Yom. One option is that the word Yom refers to the theoretical 12-hour period between sunrise and sunset. This, in contrast to the word Laila, which would refer to the period between sunset and sunrise. The other option, found in the Chumash text, is that the word Yom refers to a full 24-hour cycle, a cycle that contains both daylight and nighttime periods. It was on account of the two options available within Pshuta Shel Mikra for the word Yom that Rashi found it necessary to define Yom in its limited sense that the overall Tahara procedure cannot be done at any time during the night. The Gemara, on the other hand, is not bound by the restrictions of the Pshuta Shel Mikra. As, for example, the Torah Kohanim, in its commentary to Vayikra 7.38, interprets the words Bayom Tzavoto, which would normally translate as on the day that he had commanded at Bnei Israel, preferring instead to interpret the phrase midrashically to inform us that korbanot in general must be sacrificed during daylight hours. Tzavoto, Lahakrifes Korbanehim Lahashem, that the Bnei Israel were commanded to offer their sacrifice to Hashem by Yom during the daylight hours. And therefore, when the Gemara addresses the implied question as to what basis within the text is there that the Tahara process for a Mitzorah can or must be done during the daylight hours, as established in the Mishnah Megillah Perik Bet, it cannot be asking for a source that the Korban component of the Mitzorah obligation must be done during daylight hours, because this fact had been established midrashically from the words Bayam Tzavato of Vayikra 738. Rashi therefore suggests that the implied question relates to the first stage of the Tahara process. The implied question is that on what basis do we have that the Tziporim, the Eitz Erez, the Ezov, and the Shni Tolat, items that are not technically a korban, that the activities connected to these four items must be completed during daylight hours. With this, we will have a response to the three questions. Firstly, question number two, as to why Rashi reads the Tahara process into the Gomorrah's question rather than the entire process including the korban. It also responds to question number one, in which we asked that Rashi appears to be stating the obvious when he mentions the four items, these four items are expressly stated in the Chumash text, and in response, Rashi is alerting us to the fact that the implied question relates to the activities connected to these four items, and not to the Korban component, because the Torah Kohanim and the Gemara had earlier established that the Korbanot must be offered during daylight hours. And thirdly, Rashi's commentary is linked to the Gemara rather than to the Mishnah because from the standpoint of the Mishnah we had not as yet established that Korbanot cannot be offered during nighttime hours. It is only after we have moved into the Gemara phase that we can make reference to the Torah Kahani and the Gemara's Drash to Vayikra 7.38 which forces us to quantify and redefine the implied question asked by the Gemara.